Hello, hello, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. Before we start, the way I've chosen to define Vanilla Plus is as follows. A mod that expands known features of the game by the community and that doesn't break in-game lore or the in-game implications of lore. So an armor set that's added by a mod can fit into this description so long as it doesn't imply materials used in its crafting are something not found in the world of Kenshi. Whether or not the world would realistically have those materials, a further example here would be a mod that adds, say, a suit of armor. It also adds a material called coal to craft the armor with, or a mod that adds spider silk, etc. Whether or not this would fit into the world of Kenshi is not directly the point here, but rather the implications of that addition and the impact on the game lore it may have. Viewers will find the list of mods with links below in the description. Mods will be recommended on the Nexus as well as Steam, so viewers may need a Nexus Mods account. Players are likely to see many repeated authors and modders here. While most of this list can be seen as subjective, I will try and give an unbiased opinion to the viewer. I'll also include some mods that are not particularly close to Vanilla Plus recommendations, but that the community has recommended time and time again. Starting off, we have UI and graphical mods. These mods encompass things such as in-game maps, UI changes, and some differing performance mods like compressing texture formats. The very first mod, Texture Options, as you can see on the screen now. This mod simply downscales and replaces your textures to appear to lower resolution, which makes the game perform significantly better. My personal recommendation is the 512 or 1K world texture option as it has the most impact across the board and allows you to leave everything else at a higher resolution. Players with weaker PCs or those who are looking for simpler options may want to have every texture all at once. Compressed Textures this mod does the same thing as the previous mod, but instead of giving you options, it just reduces all the texture sizes by half. So, for instance, 2K textures to 1K textures, from 8K textures to 4K textures. The next mod on the list, nice map zones plus zone names plus roads. There's probably 10 different variations of this mod by the mod author Dashika, meaning you can likely find a variant that suits your needs by going to his workshop profile. Players can find other map variations by simply searching the keyword map on Steam or the Nexus to find a map more to their liking if they do not like this one. Big Vine Elimination Mod. This mod does exactly what the name suggests. It removes the big vines, particularly in the swamp, which seems to cause a bunch of issues with pathfinding and performance. The only downside I've noticed is the swamp looking slightly bare compared to before, but overall the mod improves performance too much to not recommend. This next mod needs little introduction for my community. KPM Performance Particles You know all those particles everywhere in game? Yeah, this compresses those particles by one quarter, meaning they are one fourth smaller. It also changes the particle format from PNG to DDS, which helps improve performance slightly as well. So a double whammy on performance there. Scar Oz NVIDIA Profile So I haven't seen any reportable or noticeable difference here with the next mod, the community seems to like it and recommend it. Specific to NVIDIA cards, this gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to optimize your NVIDIA settings so you get better performance. I will note that though the mod claims a 70% increase in performance, it however doesn't explain what the baseline for that performance increase is, meaning performance increases could be negligible for other users compared to the mod authors. On screen now, we have Breadnought's Face Paints. Simple mod adds many face paint variations to spawnable characters. Beautifully created, they provide some great additions into creating your character. Mediocre Faces adds some facial variations for Greenlanders and Scorchlanders. Relatively simple mod here, but again, beautifully made. Ceiling Shores Faces Plus. This mod adds dozens of new faces to every race, from scars to eye variations to war paints to even different head textures for skeletons. This mod adds lots of variation, which can help with longer playthroughs and give you lots of different faces. And yes, the face mods all work together, meaning you can have hundreds of new faces to choose from and see in the world of Kenshi. Mediocre hairstyles. Introducing dozens of beards and hairstyles, this allows people to spawn with better looking hair and some new facial textures. Wanted posters. A custom graphical change to wanted posters in Kenshi, providing better images if a bit larger in the inventory, this mod adds 66 new image replacers for wanted posters. Pretty simple name for such a great mod, says what it does in the title, Animation Overhaul from Glove. It's a simple mod that adds over 20 new crafting bench-specific animations. This adds much-needed love to the game and gives better animations when it comes to the game rather than to default circle your hands around. 
Moving on from that category, we get into buildings. This is my favorite part as it gives players a lot more to build and expand through as they unlock new blueprints and tech to get the new buildings. Much like the previous section, these mods can also all be played together. Setting up here, we have Forgotten Buildings. Fixing hundreds of vanilla bugs and issues, Forgotten Buildings lets players craft hundreds of old vanilla buildings and adds new altered textures to buildings to allow many of the buildings to better blend into the environment of Kenshi. With hundreds of tweaks and fixes, this mod alone can add dozens of hours of playtime. Blopeless, this mod should be placed after Forgotten Buildings in your load order. This mod allows you to better control building placement by burying or raising buildings much higher and edits the building footprint of many buildings making them placeable a bit closer than in vanilla. This mod only affects vanilla buildings. Fog Hunt adds in three new buildings for Fogman limbs and heads. Great textures and a great mod. It also 3D models and textures said heads and limbs while they're on the ground, making that detail just that much better and all the more reason you should grab this mod. Cozy Furniture While the style of some items may not fully fit Kenshi, and they do have some lore implications like certain stone not being textured anywhere in-game, you will find many of the other items like rugs and fireplaces worth having if you get into decorating your base. Leisure Objects and Furniture This mod adds some more items that, while I think fit into Kenshi, do indeed have some minor implications, but again, I think the mod is too great not to have while playing. Faction Furniture Funny story about this mod, this mod sprung up because I asked Katrina to make me a handful of chairs for specific factions. Two weeks later, she linked this to me. Faction furniture not only adds new furniture, but it also adds in faction furniture swaps. This means that the Holy Nation will actually spawn with Holy Nation furniture. United Cities will spawn with their furniture, Hivers with theirs. Old lab ruins and tech hunters with more tech styled gear. This mod adds so much love and flair to these areas. CM Killing Time by Cause. This Japanese modder has everything from animated furniture to modular building systems. While I'll be focusing on this one specific mod, his other mods are also worth the download and they do fit the theme of Vanilla Plus. CM Killing Time adds a bunch of animated standing spots, animated sitting and resting spots, and even an animated shower. A simple mod in itself, Crossbow Training Station. This mod just adds a crossbow field strip looking table to the game and it works as a training station. Adds a bit of flair and looks great. Weight Bench mod. Does what it's named. Adds a weight bench where your characters can train strength at. Animated Dex Training Dummy. This again does what it says. Animates a dummy where your characters can train their dexterity at. Immersive Furniture. This mod takes the items you'll find in game and adds them to table models with many variation. This mod will save a lot of time with decoration for your base and even replaces some interiors with new models. Random Furniture Mod This mod adds custom models in many cases of everything from bunk beds to bookshelves to new chairs to bathtubs that work like beds to giant tables with maps on them. And yes, solar panels are canon. They can be seen on the defensive gate 5. Poser's Hive Buildings. Adding in new fence and gates, a Hiver Tower variant, and new shacks for them, this mod does not distribute these buildings to the Hivers, but a mod much later in the list does do this. Following up from Poser's Hive Buildings, we have Camel Spider's Hive Buildings. This mod adds furniture themed around Hivers, another new shack variant, a Hiver Station House, a Hiver L House, and a Hiver Swamp Dome. Ancient Training Technology This adds a new custom building you can find later in the game that allows you to train all your characters safely in these machines on literally every single stat, up to, if I recall correctly, 90 in every stat. This mod is personal preference, as for some, this may feel like a bit cheaty. Advanced Camping a mod partnership between me and Azazel, this adds in a dozen of new custom camping related furniture and shelters you can craft and research on the go, build a tiny base camp, and store stuff. With plenty of additions and reworks of some of the base game content, this should make traveling much more fun and realistic. Tents. Another simply named mod introduces, that's right, giraffes and elephants. No, of course it introduces tents. These are simply modeled and simply textured, yet they offer a great amount of detail to the game. Players can craft a one-person, a two-person, or even a three-person variant of these tents. Copper Drills adds, well, you know, Copper Drills, it, add, it adds Copper Drills, it, it's in the name. I, it, it just, it's named Copper Drills and it adds Copper Drills. Using the base game Iron Drill, this fixes a tech gap for the player and allows them to move from manual iron and copper up to automated iron and copper. A simple mod that is much needed. 1K's Better Crop Fences. This French man modeled a new fence for your farms and this replaces those goofy rope fences, thus making your farms much easier to place when building. 
The next section we'll cover is armor and weapon additions. A rather large section with more subjective taste here, I want to provide a lot of alternatives for the viewer and players so that they can decide what to get. Up first, we have Accord's Nomad Cape. Fitting into the shirt slot or a belt slot, this mod simply adds a protective, nicely textured cape. Beautiful mod. Cat's Clothing Overhaul. This mod changes how mostly civilians spawn and what they spawn with armor-wise. More cloth fabrics that have the same gritty feel in Kenshi, but they're textured way better. You'll even see some odd clothing from Swampers in the Swamp wearing leaves as gear. Sadly, this mod does add in a new faction to the Swamp, but overall, I think they fit pretty close to Vanilla Kenshi. Billy Rose Cloth Masks. A simple mod that does what it says on the title. It adds a lovely hand modeled and textured cloth mask for variation. These can be worn in the head slot or the belt slot of the player. Omo's Armor for the World. This mod is a massive clothing overhaul that kit bashes custom models and custom textures, hundreds of items for the player to find and loot and craft throughout the world. Bounty Hunter Armor. Adding in a new variation of Bounty Hunter Armor, players may want to spruce up the world to add some more love to the Bounty Hunters or even roleplay as Bounty Hunters themselves with this mod. Cat's Merc Armor Bundle. The models here have a slightly different and almost Roman aesthetic despite them being very much Japanese-based armors. These models are added to Mercs, and the mod adds in two new minor backpacks. As always with Kat, she put her time and effort into these models and textures, and really designed them in such a way that they really fit into Kenshi. Another simple mod here, Forks Bog Hat. Adds a hat that you can find and craft after locating the blueprint in the swamps. Forks Hackstopper Helmet. Again, another simple mod that adds in a helmet variant for the Hackstopper set you can find on the Reavers in-game. It completes the set nicely and complements the textures well. Scar's Revenant Modular Armor. This adds a well-textured low-polygon model chestplate that has 8 variations to choose from. This allows you to build your defense and kit out to your liking. Make Holy Nation Great Again. This mod adds in variations and full remodels of the Holy Nation sets so that different ranks within the Holy Nation wear different armor types. That's Holy Order Redo. Did you know that in Vanilla Kenshi there are two factions in the Holy Nation, the Church and the State? I bet you didn't. Adding fully custom modeled and textured armor to the priests and their new guards, players can now see the small rift growing between the church and the holy nation. Elwo's Backpack Expanded. This mod adds in 10 plus new backpacks, handcrafted and textured. They can all be crafted at a new bench, added in, and relatively cheaply too. A gorgeous mod, this is a 100% a must have. Missing Sheath Weapons. This mod is small in size, but adds in some much needed missing sheaths to the game for some of the larger weapons. A simple mod, but improves immersion quite a bit. Faction Shields. This mod adds a belt slot item to the game that looks like shields or gauntlets themed around those factions. While NPCs cannot spawn with belt items, this mod does have a complementary mod that adds these items as shirt items. Faction Shields Enhance. This mod modifies the previous mod and allows these items to spawn and be worn as shirts, meaning players will find the shields spawning on their relevant factions. Accords Wheat Straw Cape. Adding in a cloth cover cape that goes in your shirt or belt slot, this thematically fits the Nomad theme Accords Hiker Backpacks. As was seen earlier, these add three textures and three size variations of backpacks. They can carry a large amount of items and are beautiful to look at. Nia's Ashugaru Armor. A simple mod that solves a simple problem, a cloth vest and a metal chest plate added to the United Cities faction, this provides some love for the police. Gosuku Armor Set Heavy plate metal, it provides three color variations, in orange, rusted, and black and red for the player. The Impaler Armor Set Another mod that's fantastic for Kenshi and so beautifully crafted. This is the ranger variation of the Gosoku armor. It's focused around perception, crossbows, turrets, and accuracy, meaning your rangers will never miss no matter what the conditions are. The next four mods from Microwave Row are a bit overpowered but provide much needed flair to some minor factions that really just needed the love. In some cases, they do break some lore or implied lore, but I think they're too amazing not to re recommend overall. And if I had to guess, the community would agree with me here. These mods are also minor expansions rather than strictly armor or weapon showcases. First up, we have Hives Expanded, adding new armor variations for all Hive factions in-game along with new weapons, new world states, new minor factions, and consequences. This mod fleshes out the Fogman, the Western Hive, and the Southern Hive. Drinking Bandits Expanded. This mod adds in a new faction variations or armor to the Shrieking Bandits of the Shrieking Forest. Cannibals Expanded. 
This adds armor and new weapons along with unique variations to the cannibal bosses. This also tweaks their stats a bit and adds weapons that really exemplify their outright cruelty to human life. Crossbow Expansion This mod adds some thematically fitting crossbows to the Holy Nation, skeletons, skin bandits, UC nobles, and even a unique one to Emperor Tengu. Camel Spider's Limb and Decapitation Overhaul This mod adds in dozen of new modeled limbs for all human variations as well as heads. In this next section, we'll cover dialogue, new functions for factions, expansions for some game mechanics, and one overhaul that adds so much love to the game while sticking directly to vanilla's lore from the man, the myth, the legend himself, Shadan. Black Candies Let's talk. The mod is simple, makes your NPCs talk a bit more, and allows them to be able to repeat some dialogue lines more than once. That way, whenever you're traveling, they won't randomly shut up forever. Russell Jim's Dialogue Expansion Project. This mod adds more lore-fitting lines of dialogue for your characters to say. More general reactions and dialogue to be had is always a great thing in my book. Shadan's Faction Caravans, another simple mod that expands the amount of and types of caravans from various factions. This greatly increases the chances of trade in your game at your own base. Shadan's Longer Merc Contract, the title says it all, add more and longer options to mercenary contracts. Russell Jim's Lore Book Expansion, sticking close to the vanilla lore, this mod adds in more readable books to the game along with missing bounty pages and other readable content. Shadan's Minor Faction Pacifiers, a relatively simple mod that expands which faction has a pacifier you can pay off and where. Many factions can now have their relations reset when they couldn't previously. This next mod I'm a little torn on, but the community kept recommending it, so I will include it here as well. Recruit Prisoners Adding thousands of lines of dialogue and complex recruitment mechanics, many characters in-game can now be recruited to the player faction. Last, but definitely not least, the top dog, the OG overhaul, Reactive World. One of the first mods ever released to the workshop, Shadan has lovingly and maybe even annoyingly pestered the devs over a million questions and tracked the development since the very, very early days of Kenshi. This work ethic and documentation and love for the game is why he is now a community admin for Lo-Fi, and why I, among hundreds of other reasons, recommend this overhaul as anyone's first foray into Kenshi overhauls. This overhaul is an amazing addition to the modding scene and deserves all of the love. Finally, to wrap off the video, we get to the part where I self-insert myself. Not Vanilla Plus per se, the community has dubbed it Kenshi 1.5. If you like all of the mods here shown, or many of the mods shown here, and don't want to download them all one by one, you are more than welcome to go to the Genesis mod page and download that instead. If you would like to follow more on the development, you can actually join the Discord, and I would recommend you do so. Anyways, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you have comments or concerns, leave them below or join my Discord and ask them there. If you have any other recommendations, leave those down below in the comments as well.